Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and just in case you missed my last episode, I did an after show part A of a fortnight of film where I addressed a lot of your comments, and then I talked a bit about how my workflow has changed over the course of the marathon. It turned out to be way longer than I expected, almost twice as long, it's about an hour, and that was cut from an hour and 40 minutes of footage, and man, if you don't watch all of it at once, I don't blame you. If you don't watch it at all, I really don't blame you. However, if you went through the entire marathon of a fortnight of film, you really owe it to yourself to at least kind of browse and look over it, uh, maybe put it on in the background. One more quick little thing before I get started. Um, I'm holding a promotion just for this episode where if you donate to my PayPal account, $20 Canadian or more, I will send you one of these limited edition 35 millimeter film holders made by Cameradactyl. So it holds five rolls of film. It says stay classic on it. It just opens up right there. And you put your film in there. So I've only got maybe 10 of them left. So get them while you can. And like I said, 20 bucks or more and honestly if you're in europe and you donate 20 bucks i'll probably take a bit of a hit <laughs> and if you're in the states i'll probably only make about five bucks on it so i'm just i'm just putting that out there that this isn't a cash grab this is just a, a cute little promotion and a way of saying thank you for your support on to today's episode today i'm going to be giving you my first impressions on the nikon f100 released in 1999 and uh, sold until 2006. And if you think about that, this thing was sold until a year after the Canon 5D Mark I came out. So it's got all the modern doodads you've come to expect from a DSLR and a little bit about this particular camera that I purchased. I got it off of eBay from a seller in Japan. It got here in like, I don't know, three or four days or something like that. Um, it's honestly, I've had mostly good luck buying stuff from Japan on eBay. It gets here just as quick, if not quicker than the States or Canada. This particular model though is a little rough around the edges. So the back portion here, it's pretty worn down and this button doesn't work. It actually popped off last night and I had to push it back on these buttons here almost don't work you really got to jam them and this switch here super hard to press really sticky and then when you open her up it's sticky along the bottom um, many of you who have shot the nikon f100 before already know that this camera is known for being sticky so that in itself isn't an issue but the one major thing that i came across was that i was shooting with uh, my buddy jacob and he wanted to let me use his nikon 50 millimeter 1.4 D and the camera would not focus with that lens on. It'll focus with this lens, but when he got home and put his 50 millimeter on his F100, it worked fine. So definitely not the perfect copy. And I am, I'm frustrated because I bought it for my birthday. Um, and oh my God, the button just came off again. <coughs> Yeah, button came off again. Guess I'm going to leave it off this time so I don't lose it out in public. Point, uh, point proven right there. It's definitely rough around the edges. The lens itself, you've seen throughout a fortnight of film. I use it on my Nikon FE, and I love buying autofocusing lenses for manual cameras in the event that I upgrade, just like now. Will I keep this camera? Chances are about 50-50 right now. I set up a return and they said that they couldn't ship their free um, free return label. And then when I tried to put their address into my Shippo account, it said it wasn't a valid address that they could ship to. So um, I'm in the refund process, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my refund. At the, the last communication is I left them a bad review hoping to get their attention because it's been days and days in order to get a reply at all. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't sort by the absolute cheapest and buy the first cheapest camera you see on eBay. 
chances are it is not necessarily for parts, but it might as well be. Anyway, moving on though, I have put a couple rolls through it and they did work. I will throw those up now. I shot HP5 at ISO 3200 at nighttime and you know, it uh, turned out great. The shutter speed has a hair trigger and the controls themselves took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, more on that in a bit though. I will see past this particular model's flaws and let you know what I think. But yeah, nothing to do now but get this camera loaded. One thing I will say is that these cameras, these 90s and 2000s model cameras, are super easy to load. I couldn't decide whether or not I was going to shoot SFX 200 or HP5, but I think I'm going to go with SFX 200. Uh, not because I actually like the film, but because I've had it for a while and I want to shoot it before it expires. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of getting tired of it. I used to be a big fan of it, but I find it, I don't know, I'm not as, not, I'm not as a big a fan of it as I used to be. And maybe that'll change today, but yeah trying to burn through these and I think I've got a couple left and I'm going to pop this one in. Loading an F100 is pretty simple. Just snap it in there, make sure it's on, fire away, and there we go. Double check the ISO, ISO is at 200, and this camera is good to go. It pulls forward so fast that you wonder if it did it right, but it did for sure. downtown and I'm actually in a different part of downtown than I normally am. I'm on the opposite end. I'm on the I'm on the west side of downtown instead of normally I end up on the east side near Chinatown and the East Village. And I'm already oh, let's see here. I'm already 13 shots in and the reason for that is if you see this building right there I took several shots of cars passing and I tried to slow the shutter down as much as I could while still hand-holding it to see if I can get some blur. I'm confident at least one of them will turn out, <laughs> but who knows? I guess editing me will tell you right here if it actually worked out. One of the things about shooting in the winter is the early sunset. Tonight the sun sets at 4.57 p.m. and right now it is, it is 3.45, so it is one hour before sunset. Really frustrating how little sun there is during the winter. A couple things about this camera and automatic cameras in general is that uh, it's really easy to blow through a roll and what's the second thing? Oh yeah, half pressing the shutter before, wow, there's a moron right there I'm trying to park. Anyway, and just about, someone just about backed up into somebody else while trying to park. Anyway. So the second thing is uh, having to half press the shutter before adjusting the settings. So in this case, I'm on aperture priority. And in order to adjust the aperture, I have to half press the shutter and then work the dial. And it's really frustrating. Well, I'm on shot number 28 now. And uh, yeah, it's hard to not just be all trigger happy. The one thing I noticed with this camera as opposed to the Nikon FE is that when I don't have to wind, I tend to take a couple extra shots, especially if I'm capturing motion. Actually, I'm on shot number 29. 
But yeah, without having to wind and stop and think, I've been clack, clack, clack. And you'll definitely see that in the contact sheet. It's also now less than a half an hour to sunset. Losing light pretty quick. Shooting almost everything at a 4.5, maybe f7.1 if I'm lucky, but mostly 4.5. Yeah, so I've got seven shots to go and I'm just gonna keep hammering on. I'm gonna start to circle around in my truck take the long way, take a way back that I didn't take leaving the truck and see if I can come up with a few more frames before I run out of film. I think one of the most interesting finds so far is that Vogue building. <laughs> it's almost like, like a villain's headquarters. Also, I've just come across a seriously condemned house. I'm gonna try and snap a few shots of that. Well folks, I got all my shots. It's a nice brisk walk today. My Fitbit says I hit 10,000 steps today. Fantastic. One of the uh, birthday presents I gave to myself. Sunlight just like disappears so fast. Shadows are so long. I mean, what time is it now? It's uh, 4.33, 20 minutes to uh, sundown. After doing 17 days of straight shooting, it's definitely hard to find new areas to walk around. And I think that's probably why I avoided this area during the marathon, is because I shot this area so much during 30 days a night. So, and a ton has changed since I've been here. Really cool graffiti, there's new buildings, there's new structures, um, everything's changed. So, but uh, I'm gonna get the car on, get this uh, roll of film home and get it developed. Hopefully it turns out well. I think it's going to definitely be super contrasty. I'm, I'm, ex I'm expecting some super deep blacks because I'm shooting SFX 200. I shot today with that film in mind, so I think I'm optimistic. I'm definitely optimistic. Okay, folks. Just finished the last wash cycle. Because I'm reviewing a camera and not a film, I'm not expecting any surprises today, but you never know. Yeah, looking pretty normal. I am getting some slight signs that there's a little bit of leakage. You can see there, 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 and all along. I'm just gonna pop this into the photo flow and then hang it up to dry. You don't have to wait though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet.
Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed those. I actually got a, quite a few more highlights than I expected from it. And as far as Ilford SFX 200 goes, I'm still not a huge fan of it anymore. Um, when I was a huge fan, it was because of the super punchy contrast. But nowadays, I'd rather start with a more flat image like that from HP5 and be able to add my own contrast as needed or wanted. But this episode is not about the film. It's about the camera. So let's take a closer look at my Nikon F100 and I'll tell you a little bit about what I learned from it and what I like and I don't like. Now, I should preface this by saying I did not read the manual. This is a first impressions. So how it feels right out of the gate without diving into all of its features. Yeah, what sort of things I noticed right out of the gate in my first few rolls. So yeah, here's my Nikon F100. And right off the bat, the one thing that I want to tell you is frustrating for me is having to activate the camera in order to change the settings. So if I just let this die here, and then I try to adjust, I can't. Now I realize it's probably a safety setting, but a lot of the times I, you know, bring the camera up and I try to adjust and then I'd be like, oh wait, I can't. So I'd have to half press and then adjust. Now one of the major frustrating things about that is that this thing is a hair trigger. I can't speak for all Nikon F100s, but this one definitely is. Barely even touching it. And that's compared to DSLRs. I've had a 5D Mark I, I've had a Canon 5D Mark II, I've had a couple of Rebels in my day, as well as the, man, what was it? The Canon 50D. And this is the most sensitive. And that includes any other film SLRs that I've shot too. This is the most sensitive trigger I've ever come across. One of the things I do like is being able to activate the light here kind of hard to tell now maybe if I shut off my overhead yeah so the first time I was out shooting with this camera it was at night time and this thing was super handy you would think such a simple thing wouldn't bring me so much joy but it did you want to know something hilarious um I just realized that I've had my bracketing on the whole time that whole roll I shot despite um a thing, despite things turning out as well as they did, I've had bracketing on the entire time. You can see it right here. That's how you turn it off. That's how you turn it on. That really explains why some of my shots came out underexposed and others came out overexposed. Man, oh man. Okay, so that is hilarious. Needless to say, if you're serious about this camera, don't do what I did and not read the manual. Read the manual. So it is able to read DX coding, but if you want to override that, you can just by adjusting here. And if you want to go back to DX, just go to the highest ISO and then drag over one more time and it'll go to DX. So yeah, like I said, I'm not an expert at this camera. In fact, I would say that this is a whole lot more camera than I personally need. Up until now, my favorite camera, my favorite 35 millimeter anyway, has been the Nikon FE, and it's a super, super simple camera. I'm gonna be honest, that was a little embarrassing. Um, I can't believe I left the bracket on the whole time. It, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. It could have bit me in the butt way more, but it does explain a couple things. Like when I shot that uh, Vogue building and I shot from the exact same um, composition and everything and I noticed that the shutter dragged in one over the other I was like what's that all about I know I'm not on spot metering so anyway that's funny and it's a good reason to read the manual <laughs> but like I said that's not what this is about this is about knee-jerk first impressions on 
how is the camera going to feel immediately going into your hands? And, and more importantly, how intuitive is it? The camera feels good. It feels natural. I like the grip. A couple of things that I don't like is that it's really button heavy. Um, there are just a ton of features and it seems like most of them have some sort of locking mechanism. So in your metering modes, you got to press this in order to adjust. Um, for your shooting style, you've got to press this to adjust. And, uh, you know, for the, for your general settings, um, you've got to press, half press the shutter in order to adjust. Now, provided things go well with the eBay seller and I get a partial refund for that, I'll probably keep it at least for a while just to get a better feel for it. I have been shopping around for the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.4 D. Um, I've wanted to upgrade from a 50 millimeter 1.8 to a 1.4 for a while anyway. So there's that. But I am curious to see how other how other Nikon SLRs handle. This is supposed to be the creme de la creme, um, but I don't necessarily need the creme de la creme. I, a lot of the time, I like something more simple. I do, however, want to end up with a Nikon with autofocus. I find that there's a lot of shots I miss because I'll walk around holding the camera and I want to capture something in motion. As much as we would all love to be manual focus masters and just flip around on a dime and be able to capture a fleeting moment in manual focus, that's not really in my skill set. I much prefer, if I'm going to capture motion like that, to be able to just, you know, swing around and have the camera do the focusing for me. That's my honest opinion on that. Uh, now, before I go, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Patrick, Ed, and Udo being the latest people who donated through my PayPal link in the description. I really appreciate it, guys. Your donations really help out this channel, no matter how small, five bucks, ten bucks, everything counts. Everything makes a difference, especially, especially in YouTube terms, that's for sure. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I may go read the manual now uh, in order to learn about my camera and what all the actual buttons do. But as far as the first impressions video, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think of the Nikon F100 in the comments. If you think that there's a camera that's even better, definitely let me know that. And until next time, stay classic.